This is Deborah Atkinson. Welcome to the Flipping 50 Show, where I address your tough questions and the things you struggle with most, so you can have more energy and less decision fatigue about what to eat, how to move, and you can change your thoughts so you can flip 50 and have the life and the energy that you would love in the second half. And this is a really juicy episode full of experimentation, if you will. So you are our virtual guinea pig. But this is the second podcast with my guest, personal wardrobe stylist, Sandra. And in this episode, we're all about two makeovers that we made available for Flipping 50 listeners like yourself. So we have two, and Sandra has named them and endeared them. I will refer to them as Callie and Michelle. You may want to refer to them as uh, something more fabulous, and she'll go into that a little bit. But just to remind you, first of all, about Sandra, and then I'll remind you about the process that we asked our participants to go through and what we used in order to give them this virtual style makeover where Sandra did all her magic work without having actually met with them, taken them into the closet, picked things out for them. She actually did this all virtually. So Sandra Viam is a highly sought after personal wardrobe stylist in San Diego. Sandra helps enhance your current style become a better version of yourself. She focuses her efforts on your individual needs, body type, and budget rather than a specific designer, brand, or store. She believes everyone can be effortless chic without their own individuals or with their own, sorry about that, individual style and at any price. Individual style comes from a person being inspired open-minded and confident with who they are. She'll help you develop your own personal style and integrate it into your life. And this is super important. It's the why we had Sandra come here because confidence and your body image, your self image is all oh so important to how much personal care you are willing to invest in yourself. And that is crucial for you taking and making health habit changes. So we've had her here to give everybody a lift and particularly Kelly and Michelle. So Sandra, welcome back. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. I am super excited to be back. So super excited, and this is what we did, reminder to you listeners, or if you're tuning in for the first time and this is all brand new to you, what we did is invited applicants. We provided, Sandra actually provided a very cool questionnaire that helped her gather the information that she needs to create a a real style suggestion based on color and based on things a woman loves about herself and things a woman might want to hide right now and isn't quite ready to reveal or wants to mask or camouflage about herself. And we sought pictures of our candidates and then we accepted two this time around. So Callie is up first. And here's here's a little scoop on Callie that I think we'll find interesting as well. Callie really is headed back to work in a new professional position, requiring some travel and, you know, hiding her body a little bit, especially her upper body, seems to be kind of dressing in winter colors. Now, this is my interpretation, and you're getting Deborah, not the stylist interpretation right now, okay? <laughs> but winter colors that are red and black. So, Sandra, what have you got for Callie? What was your what was your initial take on you know seeing her image? And all of you will see them in the show notes, by the way. Well, um, thank you for the introduction again. And um, you know, Callie, Callie, I actually named fabulous Callie, um, and and she is fabulous because anyone that is willing to put themselves out there, that's the first step in the right direction. So, kudos for Callie and Michelle. Um, but really, like you mentioned, Callie is starting back a professional image and with some travel, she also wanted to add pop, like a pop of something or color or accessorizing into her wardrobe. So we were sort of tackling that in addition to dressing for her body type. And she wanted to show me her current style, which I would consider traditional classic. 
and, um, and, you know, more on the lines of traditional. And again, none of these styles are bad. It's just a matter of having different options so you don't get in a rut. And it's about enhancing where if you might maybe feel stagnant with where you're at. So really to kind of start off with our first uh, you know, question or goal was to add pop to a basic wardrobe. And we had you know, discussed through my typing bath, basically, is that really some of the easiest ways, and again, the list is long, but these are just a few of my favorite, is to add pops of color. And you could do this with certain pieces like a jacket or blazer shoes, an accessory, you know, maybe it's your everyday purse. So if you're dressing with a certain look and you just want a little pizzazz, try that or a scarf, just that adds something of that pop of color. It doesn't have to necessarily be a whole outfit. And then also looking for different hemlines and necklines. So you add variety to your wardrobe and you're not buying what I say, the uniform dressing, which is you know, you love a sweater on you. So you buy it five different in five different colors. You know, that's, that's probably not good because it will start looking and feeling like a a uniform and then you're going to get bored and, and then you'll be known for the gal that wears those sweaters. So you want to be known for the gal or guy that wear, you know, has great style. Um, Another option I said was to have choices of jewelry and accessories, different lengths on your necklaces different types of earrings and bracelets. So for work going into her direction, you know, depending on what you do for a living, whether you're on the computer a lot, or if you present or you're talking in front of someone, sometimes bangles make too much noise, but you can still maybe add a cuff, (laughs) still give accents. But yeah, I I hear Do you have bangles? No, I don't. But bangles are like a distinguishing feature. I had a college roommate and I swear I remember her for only one semester, but it was the most obnoxious thing to hear the bangles. I mean, immediately that pops into my head. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's true, especially for going back into the workplace, you know, um, it's hard to type with, and I'm not saying I'm not against bangles by any means, but there's a time and a place. So wear that out and in different settings where you're not at church you know, or, or you're presenting or you're working on your computer. So, but these are just little ideas of adding pop or pizzazz to your wardrobe. And then I also added to add, look for different materials and textures, um, different looks to your wardrobe, you know, like for instance, with jackets, look for jackets with cutouts in them or moto style or drapey style. Um, so those were just some, you know, quick, little, easy, add some pop to a basic wardrobe. Uh, Then we also talked about the different stores that she could shop at in addition to where she's already shopping at and where she's currently at with size, uh, which is fantastic for her because she's on a great mission and she is just working hard. Um, I gave her some other ideas of where to look that has some great kind of fun fashion ideas that she might want to start looking at shopping as well. Some of these are online, uh, but two lines of my favorite. Can I mention the store? Yeah, please do. Okay. Good. Well, one is, believe it or not, Target. Um, there are two lines that in sizes 16 on up. And um, one is called, it's by Who, What, Where. And another one is Ava and Viv. And both of these are brand new lines that Target are carrying. Who, What, Where derive from the creators of the fabulous website, um, that, you know, they have a newsletter and then, um, Ava and Viv are, it's just a brand new for the, what I call full figure, fabulous gal. And there are some great pieces there like utility jackets and some great dresses. And they are designed for a full figure gal, but has beautiful lines. And, you know, I always, I always tell people when you're shopping at places like Target or, you know, some other ones that, you know, I call it um, more affordable. Mm -hmm. You want to look for the way seams are sewn, the buttons, the lining. And I will tell you, they're getting very good. So I say, check them out. In addition to some other ones um, online, like New York and company, of course, your Nordstrom's, um, your Ann Taylor, your Banana Republic, J. Crew, um, you know, just to name it, and Macy's, you know, just to name a few. And Gap. Can I ask you a question? Uh, so- now, this may just seem like an obvious yes answer, but I, I want to get your take on this because I might be making a mistake. But 
So my guess is, you know, um, from looking at Callie just initially, you know, and yes. the tend to be, if you, we were on a continuum, probably a little bit more conservative and, you know, I would say many of us are that style, but then again, you know, every once in a while, something really trendy will come up come up or come out in a certain season. So what you recommended, and I love that you mentioned Target, you know, because many of us would not think, okay, right off the top of the bat, that's a place to go. But wouldn't that be a good and affordable way to try something that's kind of out, outside your comfort zone? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going with that. I call it test driving. You know, you don't want to do a major investment in a new, let's say you've never, so for instance, Cali, you know, had a traditional button up uh, cardigan, you know, sweater, which I talked about, and then we'll get to that later about probably being a little too boxy for her silhouette. Um, and, and so to kind of look for more pieces that lay gently on her figure, because she's, she does, it looks like to me, have a small waist just underneath her breasts. And she's completely creating more of a square by wearing such a boxy top, where if you want to maybe try a peplum or a drapier type style that still just hang, you know, forms on your body, not tight, um, and the material, it's all about the material, Target would be a great way to just sort of test drive it because you're not putting so much money into something, an investment piece, and then you end up maybe, or maybe the style wasn't what you thought, or you didn't wear it as much as you thought you could. So it's a great way to test drive those new looks and materials and silhouettes that you're trying out. Fantastic. Great. All right. Yeah. And then we went into color. So as you mentioned, she was wearing a lot of red, black, and white. Um, And, you know, I I always say those colors are great, but to branch out into some jewel tones and some wine colors and blues for her, because with her coloring, she was a brunette and she had a nice skin tone. Um, I thought those colors would look great on her. And that's another great way to add a pop to a wardrobe. So I had mentioned that with her. Uh, we had talked about, you know, at at any point in your life, whether you're not at your, you know, best weight or your best fitness, you know, uh, we all have a tendency to hide that. And instead of hiding it, I am really big about embracing yourself at all points in your life. And, um, you know, because you you never want to not feel good about yourself. And especially when you're on a mission as they are with you, your listeners and your clients is that you want to celebrate every moment. And that's even the beginning of when you start your program. Um, So I I'm really big about that because your confidence has to start from within before anyone else can see that. Does that make sense? It makes complete sense. And I think you said something just so much bigger here than, than clothing I do think, you know, for, for all of you listeners, it's, you know, we think that there's going to be a mental transformation or emotional transformation when we see the physical transformation, but really it may be reversed. What, what if you create the mental transformation and you begin that emotional transformation, excuse me, and then the physical body actually comes along for the ride. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, I, it's a, I'm a big, big believer in that. And, um, you know, we have to each be our own best friend mm-hmm. <laughs> at the end of the day. So, you know, it, it starts with us and, um, you know, so on that note, I had let her know that the, cause I think this is really important to know because I feel that women now, you not now we always have with them, whether it's the media or now the social media and what you see on TV, it, we're always being told about what we should look like, how we should look, what size we should be. And I thought it was important to say, you know, I said, listen, FYI, the average size of women today is a size 16. They're 5'4", 167, 170 pounds, and a 34 double D. That is the average size. So, you know, it's it, to celebrate. I think that's just important because, you know, everything we see, we think it's everyone's a size four or, you know, they're 5'8". And, so, you know, I thought that was important to point out. That's really uh, important. About, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think that's great, you know. And the first, and that's why you're also seeing a lot of designers and even on shows like Project Runway, 
They are having great designers that design for all sizes. And I don't know if anyone's watching it this year, but this is the first season that with the models, they have all different size models, whether that's shorter or taller and fuller figured or, or just, you know, a normal model size. And they're interchanging them. They're switching them up with all the contestants. So I thought that was fantastic. And that speaks to what's happening in our world. We are embracing everyone at this point. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But we also talked about, so I really stress on not hiding your body and that you really want to find silhouettes that enhance your shape and, you know, and then add pieces for pizzazz. Like we talked about the jewelry, a scarf, a pop of color purse, fun shoes. Um, I had talked about, especially with jewelry, the type of silhouette that Callie had, you know, her shoulders looked a little bit broader than maybe her hips. And, you know, what she was trying to do is camouflage her tummy area. And um, I always say you want to give the illusion of something leaner by longer necklaces that help, you know, um, that kind of gives the illusion of bringing your eye downward. And also like with jackets, you want to look for longer lapels because it doesn't then cut you off at areas. It creates that longer illusion at a, at a point that you're trying to create a leaner effect, you know, looking for paneling darker sides on the side jackets that curve in. So it creates a natural waistline because what you're trying to do with that sort of silhouette is create a waist or emphasize a small one if you have it. And so I, you know, I've given her some um, examples as well with visuals, which I know you'll be putting that um, up and I'll have you talk about that. Absolutely. Yeah. But she, Kelly sort of sat what I considered from what I could tell with the picture is sort of an apple and, an, and maybe a little bit of an hourglass. It was a little hard to tell, but I kind of made do with that. And um, we, I talked to her about, you know, having symmetry with your shoulders and your hips and creating, and creating a waist or emphasizing the, a small waist that you might have, whether it sits high or low. And by doing that, um, usually with her silhouette, you've got some great legs. And I could tell Callie has great legs, but she was wearing what I felt too full of a pant. And so I talked about streamlining her pant and possibly doing a little bit darker colors on top because she had darker colors on the bottom, which is the smaller part of her body, and then a lighter color on top, which again gives the illusion of something larger. So if you're ever trying to downplay something, you you try to look for V-necks, you know, you try to look for a, a little bit darker colors, um, silhouettes that plays it down versus that plays it up. And you don't, you always want to get away from that boxy look. Um, so I talked about, you know, having tops that grazed over her body, um, trying jackets that have the longer lapels, more of a streamline effect. Um, and then we talked about, and I brought this up already, the you know, longer necklaces to give that illusion um, of a slimmer tummy and a bus line. Um, and then I went into her new job, but I didn't know if you had any questions from that first. It, actually, I love it. And I want to make sure that everybody here knows we are putting Sandra's notes for Callie and for Michelle right in the show notes. So when you go to flipping50.com forward slash podcast for today, which the date will release this will be next Tuesday, the first Tuesday in September 2017, you'll be able to see it all and take those notes. So, and of course, Callie and Michelle, thanks so much for participating. You, you too will get your own note. <laughs> Great. Great. Good. Because that's the most well, important, absolutely, right? right? <laughs> with, with me. Yeah. They share themselves, so we want to get them their information. And, you know, um, Callie had talked about with her new job and, you know, what kind of essential pieces to have. And and I told her, you know, I'm really big about unique jackets. And I brought this up in the past where some of my clients are, you know, like especially at our ages, you know, because I'm right there as well, that, you know, you're hot all the time. But, you know, there are jackets that have cutout effects. The material ha is breathable. Um, and I'm not saying you always have to have a jacket. I just think you have to have some unique jackets. And again, whether that's a drapey style, a blazer, some with texture, the cutouts, 
um, you know, you just want some fun for already go. Cause I always say it's like ending an, a sentence with an exclamation point. So having some unique jackets, blazers, pants, and especially for Cali, a leaner style, more of a straight cut versus a boot cut. Um, and I thought, you know, some dresses, uh, would really, and just interchangeable blouses. Um, because a lot of times people will think with business, they've got to always wear just a regular, um, <coughs> excuse me a regular cami underneath it or a t-shirt with a blazer and a pant. You get very bored. And so, you know, there are so many different ways to mix that up with the material, interchanging blouses, you know, print, you know, have, have multiple colors um, and jewelry is a big thing. And then overall, what I I left in overall, that wasn't on the questionnaire, but I always like to kind of end with an overall with both um, Michelle and Callie was, that um, I said, you know, I just kind of paraphrased phrase down to a leaner cut pant to show off her great legs, not so boxy up tops to look for things that graze over her body to showcase her waist. I said to look for darts and panels at the waist. Stay away from colors that match your skin tone. You want to look for contrast because I felt the color of her sweater literally matched her skin tone, which washes you out, even, you know, it washes you out. Um, And then I talked about how to downplay the upper body with the darker colors and open necklines and giving the illusion of the longer uh, necklaces. And I, and I made a point though, this doesn't mean that you have to always stick to dark colors or long necklaces. It just depends upon the style of the shirt and the material of the shirt and maybe the neckline. Um, If you were to have a statement necklace, which is closer up to your chest, I would just stay away from things that are really close to the neck, you know, just try to get to where probably it's an 18 inch drop versus a 16 inch drop. And then, um, you know, that was it. And that was basically the recap with, I sent some visuals to fabulous. I love it. I love it. So if you right now, can we do this? Can we pretend we're spending some of Callie's money? All right. So if we were going to go and do a little shopping and say, buy, you know, three to five items, what would you say would be like, you'd want to run her right to the store to get these? Well, I would, you know, ideally she might have some of these in her closet. A lot of times people think they have to go out and buy everything new. And this is where my version of shop your own closet, because it's amazing when I go in someone's closet, I'm like, what do you mean? You have a sheath dress. It's right here. You know? So you know, I, I would say definitely um, a a work because again, Callie was concentrating on work. So let's just kind of tackle work. I would say have a great pair of pants. And this is, by the way, one area would I where I will say, if you find a great fitting pant that you love and you know you wear pants for work or you know situations and events, I would say I'm okay with buying a couple, two to three of that pant because pants are very hard to find. And so when you find a good one, it's okay to have that foundation piece, buy them in, in multiple because, you know, if you have a certain body type, cause you know, you got to make sure you fit that foundation first and then build around the other stuff. So I just wanted to point that out. So I would say your pants, I would have a dress, definitely your jackets, um, accessories. And for work, I'm big about having a, a tote that you walk in with looking professional, whether you're carrying your iPad, your computer, Um, And a good, like I consider a structured purse for work because it just looks more professional. A hobo style bag, which is more of that drapey style, which by the way is going to be huge for fall. It definitely has more of a casual look. So I would say a great structured purse, um, a definitely a nice tote. And then, um, and when I say nice, it's in the structure and the material. I would say try to invest in leather because it does last longer in those type of pieces and you need them to be durable um, and a great shoe, whatever that is, whatever you're comfortable in with heel height. So whether that's a kitten heel, a nice classic, you know, pump, whether it's two inches, um, I, those would be my essentials. Fabulous. I love it. Okay. So there you are, Callie, and we are going to Jump in, and we're going to talk about Vibrant Michelle. So that was fabulous, Kelly. This is Vibrant Michelle. I love it. All right. Okay. I want to go just because I want to to name. I I I know. I want to name. (laughs) You're you're dynamic, Deborah. Awesome. 
All right. So <laughs> Michelle, um, different story. And I love she shared so much about her personal life yeah. in her application. So I'm going to let you kind of dive into, you know, what her real gist of it was and kind of your first um, interpretation and forte. Absolutely. And, you know, I actually get a lot of cases like, I mean, I call them cases for lack of a better word, but clients for um, at this point in their life. And I, that's why I immediately started right off the bat with Vibrant Michelle is that I wanted to start right off by thanking her um, and congratulating her on her 31 years of marriage, because she immediately talked about that and being a dedicated mom. And, and what that led to is spending and giving all of her time, as all of us moms do, to her family. And I totally get that. And I, I commend to everyone on that and Michelle. Um, and so, you know, started off by thanking her for that. I'm sure it's made a huge difference in her family's life. And 31 years of marriage, that obviously has been successful. But on the flip side of that is that over those years, you do put yourself on the back burner. You don't invest any time or energy or money for that matter into yourself. And then you find you're at your point in your life where you're, you're looking at yourself going, I don't know, you know who I am, where I stand with my style. I have trouble getting ready for something. I don't feel good about myself. And so I was thrilled that she was like, I'm ready to put some time into myself. I just don't know where to begin. So that's sort of the beginning of it. And what we really talked about in her situation is that now is the time to start investing in herself. And her question was how she can be more stylish. Um, and, you know, she, I felt that she maybe felt she was in a, a rut with her style because she didn't even really develop it yet. You know, it sort of taken a back burner and she maybe wanted to add a little, be more feminine in her dressing. And so I talked basically about how you can be more stylish, add some feminine pieces to your wardrobe. So that was sort of the, you know, quick little bullet points that I wanted to let her know. And part of that was um, color will always energize your wardrobe. So that was first and foremost. I talked about with being more feminine, maybe adding some minimal ruffles. And again, ruffles, you want to make sure you don't have too many. You want them at the right places, the right amount, because you don't want to look juvenile. And you also don't want to look costumey. And you also don't want to add in places where you may be trying to camouflage. So there's always a I, I sent visual so you can see that. I talked about flowy dresses. Um, also with her with her interpretation of like who she sort of gravitated towards, the, the people, meaning style-wise for inspiration, I threw in a little bohemian style for her. She sort of had more of this bohemian feminine want. And so I talked about a bohemian style tops where um, they're more peasant style, um, cut out jackets where meaning lacy jackets, just kind of that more feminine material. Uh, I talked about scarves and then chic but comfortable heels because she really needed to be comfortable. But nowadays there's so many different heel lengths and like chunky heels that still look pretty on top. So I kind of just gave her some ideas with that. And then I talked about, you know, start with fundamental pieces that she's probably missing in her wardrobe and that she had been such a dedicated mom for so long that maybe she needs to look at, do you have a go-to pant? How about a great pair of jeans? Do you have a going out dress, a casual dress, jackets, you know, your blouses? Do you have fun jewelry and accessories, statement shoes with a comfortable heel? Um, I talked about, so that was like a good shopping list for her to start at. And then having choices for jewelry. And again, the different lengths of, of necklaces and different earrings and bracelets and then also, I'm big about the texture and different looks, so you have variety in your wardrobe. Um, she had spent a lot of time th in thrift stores and vintage stores. And I personally, I love thrift stores and vintage stores because I love the history of fashion. So, you know, a lot of pieces I look for to add that vintage look into my modern day look. But in her case, it was more about just what was easy and affordable and you know, if it was comfortable. And so I told her now's the time to go to other stores, you know, stores today 
and that to go towards a bohemian style and maybe, but still she appreciated classic casual pieces, you know, kind of classic business. So, um, you know, adding in some of those pieces as well. So I talked to her about, because she had not stopped shop, been shopping at stores. She had been shopping at thrift and vintage stores. I talked about, you know, Nordstrom is always a great basic to get sort of a one-stop shop of all of those different looks I talked about, the bohemian, the classic, and um, the feminine look. And I also talked about um, Nordstrom Rack because those are great, you know, that's great price points because sometimes if you're used to shopping in vintage stores and thrift stores, you might have sticker shock. So maybe Nordstrom Rack is, you know, is better at your price point, which is perfectly fine. Um, I also talked about Lucky Brand which has a great kind of that bohemian and also feminine appeal in a casual setting. Um, then of course, loft, which is Ann Taylor's sister and, um, banana Republic gap. I threw in anthropology as well, because I also like their pieces. I thought that that style sort of fit her as well. Um, and then we talked about color. So she had gravitated towards black, blue, and purple. And, um, I, which I love. I also told her to try some forest greens and browns and rusts, like winter colors, which is great because we're going into fall and winter. So she'll see more of that inventory in stores. And that was due to her hair color and the coloring of her skin. Uh, and I should ask you, do you have any questions? Sorry, I I, I could just keep and talking I, I, all day sorry, long. So I wasn't interrupting because you're just so passionate. You're going boom, 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 boom. What I love, what I okay, loved that you said just a moment ago, kind of in talking about the bohemian style. And I'm so glad you defined that because I was going to bust in and say, wait, for those of us who are sitting in the back row. <laughs> so I knew, I know. Yes. What does that mean? So I got that. And, and then when you said, you know, classic styles too, I love that yin yang kind of, you know, as opposed yes. to thinking She's you old. can, you do one or the other, you know, matching them. I love that. No. Yeah. And again, that goes back to it. When someone just shops for one look or wears one look, you will eventually get bored just like food. I mean, can you imagine every morning eating the same thing or for dinner, you eat it every single day okay. for the rest well, of your life. You're going mean, to probably get some resistance here because so many, so many of the women oh, listening, okay, no, not for me. <laughs> so many of the women listening, that's a whole nother podcast are, in that rut, right? That default to, especially if you're cooking for yourself. Yes. So we just busted you yeah. all in more ways than one. Just saying, okay, <laughs> cover that base. <laughs> well, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, if someone's doing it with food, more than likely they're doing it with clothing. And what that tells me is it's all about patterns and habits. And I always talk, tell my clients that it takes 21 days to change a, a habit. And, um, and here's the thing, please don't get me wrong. I have my favorites too, you know, because I'm one of those people when I go to a restaurant, if I know what I, I, I get it and I know it's good and I'm happy every time. Fine. Absolutely. That's totally different. But what I'm getting at is in our life, we don't want to be like that movie groundhog day. If you all remember mm -hmm. that with Bill Murray, you wake up, it's the same thing. You wake up, it's the same thing. You know, you want variety. You want, your goal may be to be healthier, get more fit, but there are so many different avenues and ways to do that. It's just like exercising. People, as you are a professional, tell me if I'm wrong. If you continue to do the same exercise, your body memorizes that, your muscles, and then you get stagnant. Don't you have Absolutely. to switch it up? Yeah. Perfect analogy. Yeah. Well, that's what style that's what style as well. They're, they're all hand in hand. But anyway, so what we did was we went, and this goes to Callie as well, it, in addition to Michelle, I always talk about where do you look for inspirational looks? And a lot of my women that are in style ruts, um, they really don't know. They, they, they have no idea. They don't look at, you know, mag and magazines aren't always the answer. You know, I always tell people it could be, I think Pinterest is fantastic for ideas. Um, I think it's the the new magazine, if you will, um, even though I do get all the magazines. I'm, I'm old school, but I also have Pinterest. And by the way, I'm on Pinterest, Sandra VM, and I create bohemian style boards. I create classic style boards. It's all there. Um, Rocker chic. I mean, they're all named. So it kind of helps give visuals of what How my fun. verbiage is. 
But, um, you know, I always say Pinterest is one of the easiest ways. Um, but there's also like music and architecture and maybe it's the newscaster. I don't know. And it's not to, it's just for some inspiration. It's not, I always say not to copy them is to just sort of go, Hmm, I've never thought about wearing that, but we have the same color hair and we look like the same body type. I'm going to try that, you know, but in my own way, whether it's maybe a different color or a print or, you know, so that's all I, I say for looking for inspiration. And I, I mentioned that both with Michelle and Callie, but then back to Michelle, we talked about, again, the picture that was sent, I was trying to really fine tune what body shape she could be. She could, it almost looked like, she, again, she did have a little bit of a waist, but I don't think she realizes she has a little bit of a waist. She did carry, you know, more in the tummy area. That's where most women want to camouflage. But she, to me, was hiding those great legs again. So I talked to her about finding things that defined her waist and whether that was was a built-in waistband or uh, the dark paneling, like I previously mentioned, things that just graze over the body that don't aren't that they're not so flowy that it creates a tent effect, but that it sh- just gently shows her natural shape, um, shows the natural form. I also talked about ruching which is that that gathering at the waist um that sort of, that kind of creates that illusion again of a waist or defines a small waist and um and then I talked about a punty knit pant with her and a skinny jean because she really does look like she's got some great legs and I felt she was wearing too baggy of a pant and so it was not defining her true silhouette a punty knit pant You'll find one of my favorite ones is actually at Ann Taylor. And now that we're going into fall, they should have them on their website. But it's a, what I like about it is that it's a, the a ponty knit, by the way, is the material. And it's a nice, firm, stretchable fabric. And it's not the polyester one that is a little shiny to it. It's more of a, a cotton stretch factor, but it doesn't wrinkle. So it's great for travel. It does not lose its shape, which I love, like at the knees how some of them do. And I like the Ann Taylor one because it has a side zip versus a zipper in the front so that if you wear shirts that, you know, untucked, it doesn't show that zipper. So, um, you know, I kind of gave her some ideas about that and creating a waist by wearing angled jackets. And what that means is, is that let's say it's a, a blazer that naturally goes in at the waist by paneling. Um, but it may be longer in the front and a little bit shorter in the back. So sort of a, like an asymmetrical line. And what that does is it, again, it draws the eye down and giving sort of that leaner illusion of slimming, a slimming effect in your waist area. Um, so we talked about that and like, you know, darker colors, usually on camouflaging an area that you want to make slimming effect or a V neck and then going lighter or print on the area that you uh, are smaller in. And I talked again with her because they had similarities about the longer necklaces, giving the illusion um, and adding a scarf. And I talked with Michelle about not tying it bunched up at the neckline because then you're just adding material to an area you may want to downplay like your bust line, but that to how to wear it, you know, lengthening where you wear it longer and maybe you tie it a little bit longer, like the necklaces to give that illusion. Now, of course, let's be real. If it's freezing outside, I'm going to bunch that up at my neck. Don't get me wrong. But you know, again, after your function with it, you, let's say you, it's cold outside. It may be snowing. You're wearing it for protection. But when you walk into a coffee house or wherever you're going and you're still wearing your outfit, unbunch it and just let it drape down on your neckline, you know? So I, I know that's probably like, sounds like common sense, but you'd be surprised that someone would just take the scarf completely off and awesome. maybe you don't have to. Yeah. I'm scarves, loving it too. You know, I haven't gone there. It's, it takes somebody telling you to, I think, but love it. Well, there's different ways, so many different ways to tie a scarf and people just really don't know what to do with them. I mean, there's ways of how to create actually a vest out of a rectangle scarf. There's ways of a square scarf creating a kimono, very out easy just by tying certain knots and whatnot. Um, there's some great YouTube videos that people can look online. 
And and then with with Michelle, we talked about um, for her again. Um, it was really about developing a style for her that she has not done in 31 years. And so um, I talked about maybe not so many button up shirts um, because she wanted to kind of bring femininity into her style. And so, you know, with this last season in spring and summer, there were so many beautiful blouses with great like bell sleeves and a cold shoulder. And um, and that's the cutout at the shoulder where it exposes just the shoulder. And by the way, um, anything that kind of showcases your shoulder, but covers your arm is fabulous for a lot of my female clients because so many of them want arm coverage. And so that's a good way to still show a little bit of sexiness or femininity, but still have your arm covered. Um, I also, I, I'm always asked about like when trends like that come out, you know, well, I don't want to buy it because it's trendy and it's going to be out of style, you know, by next season. And what I tell people with that is I never say buy a wardrobe full of something that just comes out, but buy a couple pieces to have fun. And I'll be honest with you. This is where I get a little defiant with the fashion industry. When they say cut out shoulders are, or a cold shoulder is, God forbid, don't wear. Now you need to wear this. I remind people that that is also a way to sell clothing. So don't go by that. If you love that top and it looks great on you, wear it. Just don't have a, a wardrobe full of it. But, you know, wear it. I, it's, it's a way to sell clothes. So stay true to who you are. So that, I think that's important to bring up. And then I talked to her about her, her current style, you know, I felt was maybe a little bit more masculine um, with the button up tops and some of the style of the dresses that she had sent might be um, a little bit, not hippie, but it wasn't bohemian. So I think she may be trying to go there, but the way the style was, and it had a more of a puffy sleeve where that would actually broaden a broad shoulder already. And it's a little juvenile. So I was kind of going more, I sent pictures of what would be a little bit more sophisticated and feminine for her. Um, and then to show off her legs, you know, try a great wrap dress that just goes to her knee or just above it. You always want to look for a dress at the smallest part of your, um, like just sometimes just below the knee where it curves in and then goes back out with the calf. That sometimes is a, it looks great on a lot of women, depending on their height, um, because that's the smallest part. And then, um, you know, how to wear the jackets with a skinny jean and a skinny cargo pant with a blouse or a drapey tank. And again, I sent visuals for this. Um, ending with Michelle overall, I said that, you know, um, to look for more feminine pieces with a bohemian flair and you can still have some structured looks. Just make sure that they were drapey and not constricted or boxy. Um, and a lot of that depends on the material. And then to definitely look for a leaner cut pant to show off her legs. Um, and we ended, you know, with that. So I, I'm really hoping it's beneficial so, for both so ladies. So exciting. I can't imagine that it won't be. And I'm so excited for both of them to kind of get it and actually be able to dive into the images too. And we'll share those directly with those two ladies, of course. But the rest of you can peek over our shoulder at the show notes at flipping50.com forward slash podcast. So just to double check and make sure everybody knows, Sandra, you can be reached at mymariposastyle.com. And I want to be sure we mention again, because I think we're going to have a lot of traffic coming your way, but what again is your handle on Pinterest? It's just my name. I'm really easy. Instagram and Pinterest. I am Sandra Viam. <laughs> which is Sandra. And then last name is V as in Victor, E-U-M as in Mary. Okay. We'll include that very, in the show notes simple. as well. And anyone listening who just is wishing that somebody would have made them over or who's got just a runaway of great tips. And I'm sure that you do from the spillover and the commonality between you and your goals and what we've covered here with Kelly and Michelle, leave a question below the show link at flipping50.com. Join us on our Facebook fan page at Flipping 50 TV. And if you enjoy the show, I'd love it if you'd leave a rating in iTunes and then share this with a friend so you can surround yourself with a supportive community of women who are on the same journey. What are you waiting for? Start Flipping 50 today.